Today on the workbench, we have this Philips desktop microphone, model number EL3752-00. This microphone came out in 1960. They produced two other model years after this, 1961 for the EL3799, and in 1963, the EL3784. As I mentioned, a stroke after the model number of 00. I have seen other microphones with the nomenclature of 01. I do not know the difference between the 00 and 01. What does that mean? I don't know. These microphones came with different mic plug types, so maybe that's the answer i'm really not sure this microphone is a dynamic microphone with a cordioid pattern in 1960 this microphone sold for 39 dollars and 50 cents which equates to 317 dollars and 39 cents in today's money now this microphone was also part of the accessories with Philips tape recorders, reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders, as well as being able to purchase them individually. There's not a lot of information on this microphone specifically, so I really can't speak much about it. This is a new acquisition for me, so I have no reference of how good of a microphone it is or isn't. Part of this video, we'll actually get to test the microphone out and we'll see how it sounds. The microphone is about six and a half inches tall. It's made out of plastic and we have a plastic pedestal. The microphone elements are on either side of the body. We know this because it tells us so on top. And what we have up top is Philips logo. This microphone is made in Holland and I believe all of them are made in Holland, at least the few examples I've seen online. Microphone one, microphone two, and then the model number. The microphone is two-tone light gray, dark gray. There's no buttons, switches, nor on the cable. Cable is a nice long 16 feet of wire. The cabling is a nice thick piece of wire. It's probably about the equivalent to that of a standard AC cord from your radio or other small appliance. We have a nice strain relief on it, nice metal plug. This particular plug is a three pin DIN and I have seen a quarter inch and a five pin DIN connected to these wires. Maybe that's what the 00 or the 01 is referencing. I'm not sure. It could be a revision update as well. As stated, the microphone body has no buttons or switches. It's held in place with this screw and the washers right there help support it. Here we have the mic stand pedestal removed. The screw is held in place by this washer, which unscrews so you could easily remove it and replace it or other. The screw is a 3 8 inch screw, which means you could now mount this on a more conventional mic stand as opposed to the tripod or the base. The weight of it is probably pound and a half, two pounds. It's got some nice weight to it, not light and flimsy at all. Plastic is good solid, and you can probably see the windscreen, metal mesh screen. I'd imagine that screw and that screw would break the case apart and gain access to it. From what I understand, there is foam padding in here, and over time that disintegrates. I have not torn mine open to see if indeed we have issues with that. I see absolutely no particles on the screen, so I'd like to think that at this point I'm okay. I really don't have plans on opening it up if I don't have to. As stated, I have not tested this microphone out, so I, I don't know how good it is, how good it sounds, mainly because I do not have a three pin in recorder that I could try this on. But that's the purpose of this video, really, is I'm going to remove the three pin in and put on a one eighth inch or three and a half millimeter jack. I'm not sure if the strain relief on this will stay behind because the cable is thick. I may or may not be able to feed the cable through that and that's okay if not. I purchased this microphone exclusively for my workbench. I do use a lapel microphone which is what you're listening to. I plan on using this in conjunction with my microphone but essentially with products 
that I'm going to test or review and try to share is audio, some good foreground audio instead of tinny or background or not strong enough. So as long as this microphone sounds good, then it'll keep its permanent place here on my workbench. I'm not sure if it's going to go straight behind where the gap is back there. That's my intention. Or it may go up on one of my shelves. So let's go ahead and get started. The jacket is only attached by this set screw. Some adapters or some plugs have screws, others just screw on. Here we have the new plug ready for preparation. And so what we want to do to get these pins prepared for the, uh, for the wire is we want to make sure we use some flux, which will help the solder adhere and the heat to dissipate properly evenly. Just take a little swipe where we're going to solder. And then we will pre-tin the site. Nice solder blob here on the ground. And here on the right channel. and on the left channel. Now I've repositioned my alligator clip here, make it easier for me to solder and view the camera at the same time. We're gonna solder the ground in first, since that'll be at the bottom. Make sure you have a pretty hot iron for this. I'm working at 600 degrees. The ground is a little thicker than the rest. Let's put another little blob on my iron. And we'll come back and we'll hit the ground. Make sure that you keep your iron clean while you do all this. And then we're going to put the uh, left channel on next. And now we're on the Philips microphone. The microphone's about 16 inches in front of me. And from what I could tell through my headsets, it, it sounds pretty good. Sounds like it's picking up good audio. Not sure about the right channel. I'm gonna have to pull the card out and put it in the computer because I'm not hearing anything on the right channel. However, I also noticed that my lapel microphone that I've been using for this video is goofing up. So I'll have to figure that out. Let me bring this mic closer to me. Here we are about five inches away from my mouth and it seems like it still has some good forward audio forward gain and here i am right up close 
on the microphone and even that don't sound too bad from what I could tell. Let me unplug the card from the camera, put it in the computer, test it, and let's see what happens. Listen to it on the computer and it sounded just fine. Both channels are working. I'm very happy with the way it's come together. So let's go ahead and finish assembling the end and wrap this project up. Now I put the uh, protection covering over the terminal connection so they don't ground out against the shield. Next thing we're going to do is heat shrink tubing for strain relief since on this particular jacket it used this spring type strain relief. The wire would not fit through that so we just a little uh, shrink tubing. Turn my Heat gun up a little bit, turn it up to uh, 195 degrees. That looks pretty good. And there we have it, but a really nice good strain relief with that heat shrink, nice metal connector, and that should last a while. Let's go ahead and do one final test and we'll plug it into the camera just to make sure everything's working. I have the microphone about two and a half feet away from me and you can see that it is picking my audio up from this distance, so that's pretty good. About a foot and a half away from me. Yeah, so that's pretty good. Let me go ahead and bring it closer. All right, this is right in front of me, and it looks like we have good forward audio gain. So there it is in all her glory. The Philips EL3752-00 microphone from about 1960. It will continue its life on my workbench, and it'll be part of my future videos. So I'm looking very much forward to using the microphone and I hope it works out for its intended uh, task. Now this microphone was nicknamed the Rocket and I don't know why that is. Goofy little tidbit, I'm sure. This will conclude the video on the Philips EL3752-00. Hope you enjoyed and we'll catch you in the next video. CQ, calling CQ. Uh, uh, come in, please.